Dear friends, I am glad to welcome today in Ukraine Prime Minister of Italy Mario Draghi, President of Romania Klaus Iohannis, President of France Emmanuel Macron, Federal Chancellor of Germany Olaf Scholz. Dear friends, we highly appreciate you being with us today. Right now, on the eve of decisions which are historically important for the whole of Europe. And thank you for starting your visit from our city of Irpin. You saw with your own eyes what the Russian occupiers were doing in Ukraine to the people. This visit of the four leaders to Kyiv and our talks have proved once again that our main strength and the most effective weapon is unification. Unification on which everything else depends. When you were arriving at the railway station in Kyiv, an air raid siren sounded, and it still sounds in most regions of our country. And this proves that Russia does not choose whom and when to threaten. It does not choose whom in Europe to grant security. Russia's aggression against Ukraine is an aggression against the entire united Europe, against each of us, against our common values. And unity should be our only answer. Ukrainians today are at the forefront of the fight against Russian strikes. But not alone, and the format of today's meeting confirms this. We talked, fully understanding each other, about continuing and strengthening Ukraine's defense. And I am grateful to the partners for the relevant steps that were agreed upon today. We talked about the coordination of our approaches to economic support of our citizens, Ukraine itself, and coordination in the post-war reconstruction. We analyzed our joint capabilities to counter the food crisis provoked by Russia. We must do everything possible to prevent the realization of the Russian plan which could lead to hunger and political chaos in the countries of Africa and Asia, which were left without food supplies from Ukraine. We also substantially discussed further sanction pressure on Russia. And, of course, we paid significant attention to the future of Europe and the European integration of our country. I have informed the partners about the current situation at the front line, about heroic defense in Donbass, situation in Kharkiv region and in the south of our state. I have also shared information about daily rocket strikes. The total number of various Russian missiles used against Ukraine, against the civilian population, may approach 3,000 this month. The absolute majority of the missiles were aimed at civilian targets. With all this in mind, I have outlined our priority defense needs. We appreciate the support already provided by partners, and we are looking forward to new supplies, especially heavy weapons, modern rocket artillery and missile defense systems, and more. Every batch of such supplies means saved Ukrainians, and every day of delay or postponed decisions is an opportunity for the Russian military to kill Ukrainians and destroy our cities. There is a direct relationship, the more powerful weapons we get, the faster we can liberate our people, our land. Ukrainian people, the absolute majority of them, are waiting for the liberation of our territory, the territory of Ukraine. Today we touched upon the topics of diplomatic efforts by various parties to restore peace. Everyone sees that the only obstacle to all these efforts is Russia's unwillingness to engage in real negotiations and real action to restore peace. Russia does not want peace, it wants nothing but war. Right at this moment, while we are here, in the Mariinsky Palace, Russian troops continue a brutal offensive in the Donbass. They are strengthening their group in the Kharkiv region, strengthening the bridgeheads in southern Ukraine. The aggressor state must realize that there is no alternative to peace and it must seek peace. In the meantime, we all see, and we have heard it today, when the air raid siren sounded, that Russia is only looking for new ways to intimidate Europe and seize more of our land. Ladies and gentlemen, Russia's goal in this war is to break Ukraine and therefore break Europe as a whole.
Russia wants to show that European unity is allegedly incapable of being effective and that European values cannot work to protect freedom. We can, and therefore we must work together to break this scenario and prove to them that Europe will continue to be free, democratic, and I emphasize once again what is important, united. Support for our integration into the EU can now become the main manifestation of our common strong position. The very course of European history has proved the correctness of the EU's positive response to Ukraine's aspirations. Ukraine's candidate status for the European Union can fundamentally strengthen freedom in Europe and become one of the key European decisions of the first third of the 21st century. I believe that this decision will be our strong historical success. Of course, we understand that the way to the European Union is really a long way, it is not just one step. But this path must have a beginning. And we are ready to work so that our state is transformed into a full member of the European Union. And Ukrainians have already earned the right to stand on this path and receive the status of a candidate. We have all seen polls that confirm that the majority in all European countries and on the European continent in general, supports Ukraine's European integration. We also have a historical high level of support for European integration by the people of Ukraine. This is also very important. We talked about the new sanction steps of the European Union, which are needed to restore peace. The seventh sanctions package must be agreed. We plan to discuss the reconstruction of Ukraine after the war in greater detail. We will continue to discuss this after the press conference. We will also discuss the work to compensate for all losses caused by Russia to Ukraine, to Ukrainian citizens, to our business and companies. Our state is very active in this. Attention was also paid to how to stop the unfolding global food crisis. Ukraine is doing everything possible to unblock our seaports, but this blockade must be lifted by the one who imposed it, namely Russia. More specifically, the Russian fleet. We are also grateful to Romania for its assistance in the transit of Ukrainian goods, including grain, through the Danube. We discussed in detail with the leaders present how to increase these capabilities. I am confident that this visit of our friends to Kyiv will go down in the history of our state in Europe. Thank you for the negotiations. We are preparing for new important decisions to strengthen Ukraine and strengthen security in Europe. Thank you.